Haiti's government has imposed a state of emergency and a curfew amidst surging gang violence and a deadly gang assault on the capital's main prison that allowed thousands of inmates to escape. The government gave us the weapons to fight with our brothers and sisters. Now we turn the guns against them to fight them because they don't do anything for us. In recent times, Haiti has become a hotbed of violence, with gangs wreaking havoc on its streets and leaving its citizens living in fear. Just recently, a daring gang thrust the country into further chaos by orchestrating violent prison breaks across the country. In a country where gangs outnumber the military by 60 to 1, very little is known about these gangs until now. Here are some of the most dangerous gangs in Haiti. G9 Family and Allies G9 Barbecue is a 42-year-old former cop who has now turned gangster. He was fired from the Haiti National Police in 2018 after being named in a series of violent crimes. The history of the G9 family and allies is intertwined with the political landscape of Haiti, marked by corruption, violence and the use of gangs as tools of repression. It all began with a relationship between Jimmy Cherizier, also known as Barbecue, and then President Jovenel Moise. Barbecue, a former police officer notorious for extrajudicial massacres, found himself fired from the police force. However, his connection with Moise did not end there. Instead, Barbecue and his Delma 6 gang allegedly continued to receive support from the Moise administration. This support included money, weapons, police uniforms, and even government vehicles. At the time, Haiti was in the midst of a dire economic crisis, rampant corruption, gasoline shortages, and rising violence. Mass protests demanding Moise's resignation swept the nation as he became widely unpopular. In this tumultuous environment, Barbecue's formation of the G9 alliance seemed aimed at propping up Moise and maintaining social order in poor neighborhoods. Barbecue promised that the G9 coalition would restore peace in Port-au-Prince, but the reality was far from it. Kidnappings soared, and internal clashes within the G9 federation led to further bouts of violence. The alliance, which initially appeared as a means to support Moise, began to distance itself from the president. In June 2021, Barbecue filmed a video calling for a revolution against political and economic elites, including Moise's party Party, the Haitian Tet Kale Party, PHTK. Then, in July 2021, a shocking event shook Haiti and the world. A squad of hitmen with military training assassinated President Moïse in his private residence. The G9 had already somewhat distanced itself from Moïse, and this assassination further highlighted the complex dynamics at play. It was a landmark moment for the G9 and Haiti as a whole, as the country plunged into even deeper instability. The loss of their main political sponsor did not seem to have a significant impact on the G9. Instead, Barbecue and the G9-affiliated gangs seized the opportunity presented by the widespread instability following Moise's death. They expanded their territory and asserted control over key infrastructure, including Haiti's largest oil terminal, Terminal Varu. However, the G9's dominance did not go unchallenged. Their main rival, G-PEP, a federation of gangs formed by Gabriel Jean-Pierre, alias T-Gabriel, emerged to combat the influence of the G9. The two alliances clashed on multiple fronts around around Port-au-Prince, contributing to what has become one of the world's most urgent humanitarian crises. The death of Iska Andris, also known as Iska, in November 2023, represented a major loss for the G9. Iska held significant sway within the alliance, possibly even rivaling Barbecue's influence. His absence created a void that could potentially shift the balance of power within the G9. At the helm of the G9 family and allies stands Jimmy Cherizier, better known as Barbecue, a former police officer turned gang leader. Barbecue Barbecue has become a central figure in the criminal landscape of Haiti. His Delmas 6 gang, which he leads, is one of the most powerful factions within the G9 Federation. Barbecue's rise to power began during his time in the police force, where he gained a notorious reputation for his involvement in extrajudicial massacres. However, his dismissal from the police force did not mark the end of his influence. Instead, he continued to receive support from the administration of then-president Jovenel Moisi. This support included financial resources, weapons, police uniforms, and even government vehicles. The Delmas 6 gang, under Barbecue's leadership, played a crucial role in the formation and expansion of the G9 alliance. Their involvement in the coalition allowed them to expand their territory and increase their influence. Barbecue's charisma and strategic mindset have been instrumental in rallying other gangs to join forces under the G9 umbrella. Among the other prominent leaders within the G9 federation is James Alexander, also known as Sonson, of the Baz Krasha Deef gang. Sonson's gang has established a reputation for its involvement in violence violent clashes and criminal activities. Ezekiel Alexandre, alias Zay, of the Baz Pilot Gang, was another key 
leader within the G9. However, Z is currently incarcerated, which has had an impact on the dynamics within the Federation. Christ Roy Cherry, also known as Chrysler, leads the Nanti, Boa Gang, while Albert Stevenson, alias Juma, was the leader of the Simon Pele Gang before his incarceration. Mikanor Altes, known as King Mikano, leads the Waf Jeremy Gang, and Matthias Saintil is a prominent figure within the Nan Boston Gang. Serge Alectis, also known as Tijunia, was a leader of the Baznan Chabon Gang within the G9. However, Tijunia's fate took a tragic turn in 2022 when he died. Iska Andris, alias Iska, was another influential leader within the G9. His death in November 2023 represented a significant loss for the Federation, as Iska held considerable sway and influence, possibly even rivaling Barbecue's power. The G9's leadership structure is complex, with each leader commanding their respective gang and contributing to the overall operations of the Federation. However, it is important to note that the G9 is not a monolithic entity. It is made up of different gangs with different goals and histories. These differences occasionally resurface and lead to infighting within the Federation. The leadership within the G9 family and allies plays a crucial role in shaping the Federation's the G9 family, and allies have established a strong presence in the heart of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Different member gangs within the Federation control various neighborhoods, each contributing to the overall influence and territorial reach of the G9. One of the key strongholds for the G9 is the Delmas District, specifically Delmas 6, which serves as the home base for Barbecue and his Delmas 6 gang. Delmas 6 has long been associated with the G9 and has played a pivotal role in the formation and expansion of the Federation. The neighborhood's strategic location and infrastructure make it an important hub for the G9's operations. Cité Soleil, another district in Port-au-Prince, is also a significant area of control for the G9. Within Cité Soleil, the Waf Jeremy neighborhood has become an important base for the group in recent years. According to a 2020 report by Rezo Nodwes, Waf Jeremy has witnessed a growing presence of the G9, solidifying their influence in the area. Belicou, another neighborhood within Cité Soleil, has also been a key area for the G9, serving as the base for Iska Andrish, alias Iska, before his untimely death. The G9's territorial reach extends beyond Delmas and Cité Soleil. They have traditionally had strongholds in other districts of Port-au-Prince as well. The Nanti Bois Gang, led by Christ Roy, Sherry, operates in the Nanti Bois neighborhood, contributing to the G9's presence in central Port-au-Prince. The Nan Boston Gang, led by Matthias saint also plays a role in the G9's operations within the Nan Boston neighborhood. While the G9's territorial control is subject to the ever-changing nature of Haiti's gang conflict, their presence in these key neighborhoods has allowed them to exert influence and expand their operations. These neighborhoods serve as bases and strongholds from which the G9 conducts their criminal activities, including extortion, kidnapping, and control over public services. It is important to note that the G9's territorial control is not absolute, and they face challenges from rival gangs and alliances. One of their main rivals is G-PEP, a federation of gangs formed to combat the influence of the G9. The clashes between the G9 and G-PEP frequently occur in contested territories, contributing to the ongoing violence and instability in Port-au-Prince. G-PEP. The first objective of a fight is to ensure that Prime Minister Ariel Henry's government does not remain in power by any means. All of us, the armed groups in the provincial towns and the armed groups in the capital, are united today. With their origins in the Cité Soleil neighborhood of Port-au-Prince, GPEP has emerged as a formidable force, engaging in deadly conflicts with rival gangs, particularly the G-Nibes. The violence unleashed by these gangs has plunged Haiti into a catastrophic spiral of violence, with gangs now controlling nearly 90% of the capital. GPEP, a gang coalition loosely linked to opposition parties, emerged as a counterforce to the G9 gang in the Cité Soleil suburb. Led by Jean-Pierre Gabriel, also known as T. Gabriel, GPEP was formed as a copycat federation of criminal armed groups. Their primary objective was to challenge the dominance of the G9 and establish their own reign of terror. While some believe that GPEP is associated with the opposition, others allege that the group is funded by and aligned with a well-known Haitian businessman. These connections have undoubtedly played a significant role in their rise to power. Since its formation in 2020, GPEP has been engaged in a fierce battle with G9-affiliated gangs in Cité Soleil, particularly in the Brooklyn neighborhood. This conflict intensified in 2022 when G9 attempted to displace GPEP from their stronghold in Brooklyn. The resulting clash claimed the lives of 50 people, showcasing the extreme violence and brutality of these gangs. As GPEP continues to expand its influence, it has incorporated other gangs into its co 
coalition. One such gang is the infamous 400 Mawozo, which allegedly joined forces with GPEP after the extradition of its leader to the United States. These strategic alliances are seen as a step towards GPEP's expansion from the capital into other regions of Haiti. The reign of terror unleashed by GPEP, one of the most dangerous gangs in Haiti, has had devastating consequences for the country and its people. This section will delve into the impact of their actions on the civilian population and the wider implications for Haiti. Throughout the country, violent confrontations between rival gangs have become increasingly frequent with serious consequences for the civilian population. The communes of Cité Soleil, Delmas, Croix des Bouquets, and the neighborhoods of Martisson and Bel Air have become hot spots of gang violence. These conflicts have not only resulted in numerous deaths and injuries, but have also caused mass displacements, leaving countless families homeless and vulnerable. Tragically, these violent clashes between gangs are often used as a cover for the intentional killing of civilians. The Bel Air massacre of April 1, 2021, for instance, was initially blamed on an inter-gang confrontation, but has also been labeled as political. Such incidents highlight the ruthless nature of these gangs and the disregard they have for innocent lives. The consequences of the violence extend beyond loss of life and physical harm. Entire communities, like the Tabaret neighborhood, have been cut off from the outside world due to the intensity of the violence. This isolation has led to dire conditions, with no access to food, water, or sanitation. Cholera outbreaks and famine-level conditions have been recorded, pushing the affected population to the brink of survival. The chaos and insecurity caused by GPEP and other gangs have driven record levels of migration, with hundreds of thousands of Haitians leaving the country in search of safety and stability. The impact of this mass exodus on Haiti's social fabric and economy cannot be overstated. The devastating consequences of GPEP's actions have left Haiti in a state of despair. Hospitals and schools have shut down, major relief agencies have withdrawn, and the state's disintegration is evident. The current march towards anarchy shows no signs of abating, leaving the civilian population to bear the brunt of the violence and instability. The catastrophic spiral of violence unleashed by GPEP and other dangerous gangs in Haiti has prompted urgent calls for intervention to break their stranglehold on the nation. This section will examine the pleas for assistance from the interim government and the international community, as well as the uncertain future that lies ahead for Haiti. Interim Prime Minister Ariel Henry has repeatedly called for a multinational force to intervene and restore order in the country. However, to date, no such deployment has taken place, leaving the population in a state of utter desperation. The absence of a strong security presence has fueled a wave of vigilantism, with suspected gang members being hunted down and brutally killed by machete-wielding mobs. In response, gangs have retaliated by targeting innocent civilians, further exacerbating the violence and insecurity. With no elected officials in office and the insecurity too great to hold an election, Haiti's democracy is paralyzed. The only consensus among the population is that the current march towards anarchy will continue, with civilians bearing the heavy cost. The situation has reached such a dire state that people describe their lives as 24 hours renewable, living in constant fear of stray bullets and violence. The international community's response to the crisis in Haiti has been limited, with major relief agencies pulling out and no multinational force deployed. The lack of intervention has left the country in a state of despair, with hospitals and schools shuttered and the population left to fend for themselves. The consequences of this inaction are dire, as Haiti's already fragile social fabric and economy continue to crumble. The future of Haiti remains uncertain. The violence and lawlessness perpetrated by gangs like GPEP have pushed the country to the brink, with no clear solution in sight. The international community must recognize the urgency of the situation and provide the necessary support to address the root causes of this crisis. Without intervention, Haiti's path towards stability and recovery will remain elusive. 400 Mawozo. Is this gunman in a Spider-Man mask behind the brazen kidnapping of 17 missionaries in Haiti? He's the leader of the country's most notorious gang known as 400 Mawozo. The 400 Mawozo gang, also known as the 400 Lame Men, has gained notoriety as one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in Haiti. Under the leadership of Joseph Wilson, alias Lanmo Sanjo, this gang has consolidated its power in Croix de Bouquet, a significant neighborhood and criminal hotspot north of Port-au-Prince, as well as other parts parts of Haiti. Their innovative approach to crime and extensive network have made them a major concern for experts and authorities.
Nazis. The history of the 400 Mwozo gang is shrouded in mystery and intrigue. While little was known about this criminal organization before 2019, when reports of gang clashes involving the 400 Mwozo gang started emerging in Haiti, it is believed that the group was actually formed in 2016. Since then, the gang has experienced significant expansion and has become a major concern for experts and authorities in the country. According to a security analyst, the 400 Mwozo gang has been steadily growing in size and influence since 2018. While the exact reasons for their rapid expansion remain unclear, it is believed that the gang's innovative tactics and ability to adapt to changing circumstances have played a crucial role in their rise to power. Gang experts consistently cite the 400 Mwozo gang as one of the most worrying criminal organizations in Haiti. What sets them apart from other gangs in the country is their unique approach to crime. While they possess many of the common characteristics of criminal groups in Haiti, such as access to high-powered weaponry, involvement in criminal economies, and political connections, the 400 Mwozo gang stands out for their innovative methods. One of the most notable tactics employed employed by the 400 Mwozo gang is what is known as express kidnapping. This method involves sending small groups of armed men on motorcycles to target individuals located on main roads or using public transportation. The victims are quickly abducted and held captive for a few days until a relatively small ransom is paid. This model of kidnapping is based on scale rather than demanding exorbitant sums of money, allowing the gang to carry out a large number of kidnappings and secure a steady stream of income. The 400 Mwozo gang's use of express kidnapping on a major level in the country is a testament to their ability to adapt and innovate. This tactic has allowed them to establish a reign of terror and instill fear among the Haitian population. Their actions have not only affected individuals but have also had a significant impact on the overall security situation in the country. While the exact leadership structure of the 400 Mawozo gang is not fully known, Joseph Wilson, alias Lanmo Sanjo, is widely recognized as the leader of the gang. Lanmo Sanjo, which translates to death has no appointed time, is a wanted man, facing charges of murder, attempted murder, kidnapping, and vehicle theft. His leadership and influence over the gang have been instrumental in their rise to power. The second in command of the 400 Mwozo gang is Jermaine Jolly, alias Yon Yon. Jolie was sentenced to life imprisonment in 2018 after being accused of a range of crimes, including kidnapping, rape, armed robbery, murder, illegal possession of a firearm, and criminal association to the detriment of 20 people. Another important lieutenant within the gang Gang was Gaspi Yaj, who met his demise in a shootout with authorities in November 2021. With over 1,000 members scattered around the outskirts of Port-au-Prince, the 400 Mwozo gang is said to even have a waiting list of potential youngsters who want to join their ranks. This highlights the gang's ability to attract new members and expand their influence. The recruitment of young individuals into the gang not only ensures their continued growth, but also perpetuates the cycle of violence and criminality in Haiti. The criminal activities of the 400 Mwozo gang are both extensive and alarming. While their notoriety stems from their involvement in collective kidnappings, their criminal repertoire extends far beyond that. The gang has been responsible for a wide range of illegal activities that have wreaked havoc on the Haitian population. Tonight, a Florida family says the FBI is investigating the kidnapping of two Americans in Haiti. One of the most high-profile incidents involving the 400 Mwozo gang was the abduction of 17 American and Canadian citizens, including five children, in October 2021. Initially, it appeared that the victims had managed to escape their captors, but new information suggests that they were actually released after a mysterious donor contributed a staggering $1 million per person to the ransom. This incident not only highlighted the audacity of the gang, but also their ability to operate on an international scale. Religious groups have also fallen victim to the 400 Mwozo gang. In April of last year, seven clergy members, including two French citizens, were kidnapped, with the gang demanding a $1 million ransom for their release. Fortunately, they were all freed a week later, but the details surrounding the ransom payment remain unknown. These incidents demonstrate the gang's willingness to target anyone, regardless of their background or nationality. However, religious groups are not the only victims of the 400 Mwozo gang. According to Haiti's Human Rights Analysis and Research Center, KRDH, the gang has also specialized in the extortion of businesses, hijacking of trucks, and other forms of illegal trafficking along the border with the Dominican Republic. Their involvement in these activities Activities not only generates significant profits for the gang, but also contributes to the overall destabilization of the region. The geographical reach of the 400 Mwozo gang is primarily concentrated in the municipality of Croix de Bouquet, located on the outskirts of the metropolitan area of Port-au-Prince. However, their presence has also been reported in the municipalities of Gantier, Thomasso, and Fonsverette. These areas serve as strategic bases for the gang to carry
carry out their criminal operations and expand their influence. In recent times, the 400 Mawozo gang has established a permanent presence in Canaan, a suburb of Croix de Bouquet that serves as a crucial route to the north of the island. This move indicates their intention to expand their criminal activities to other parts of the metropolitan area of Port-au-Prince by encircling the capital. The gang's strategic positioning allows them to exert control over key transportation routes, enabling them to regulate the flow of goods and people, further solidifying their power. The 400 Mawozo gang's presence extends beyond Haiti's borders as well. According to a security analyst consulted, the gang has established a foothold at the border point of Malpass, which lies across from the Dominican Republic. This strategic location provides them with access to a range of criminal activities, including contraband, human smuggling, human trafficking, arms trafficking, and drug trafficking. Their involvement in these illicit trades not only generates substantial profits, but also poses a significant threat to regional security. While the 400 Mawozo gang has not been explicitly linked to any alliances or rivalries, it is believed that they have supplied ammunition to the Village de Dieu gang in Port-au-Prince. Additionally, small armed groups in the suburb of Canaan have likely aligned themselves with the 400 Mawozo gang, contributing to their expansion and influence. Grand Ravine and Five Seconds Gang. In the morning at July 7, at night this year, for 2006, people from La Métimoche and gangs of Tibua come in the morning and make everybody wake up and say that the day is fire. After they killed his brother, they shot in her direction too. The Grand Ravine and Five Seconds have established their stronghold in the Martisson region of Port-au-Prince. These gangs consist mainly of young individuals from the shanty towns, many of whom were former members of vigilante brigades and popular organizations associated with Fan Mi Lavalas. Since 2014, with the support of certain parliamentarians from both the government and the opposition, these gangs have engaged in criminal activities such as kidnappings and hijackings, accumulating significant wealth. They have also formed alliances with corrupt police officers and businessmen, providing them with protection. Notably, they control the majority of the motorbike taxi ranks and the southern exit of Port-au-Prince, which is vital for four departments in the country. From 2014 onwards, with the support of certain parliamentarians from both the government and the opposition, the Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs began their ascent to power. They saw an opportunity to exploit the chaos and instability that plagued the nation, and they seized it with both hands. Their criminal activities were nothing short of audacious. Kidnappings became their bread and butter as they targeted individuals from all walks of life, from wealthy businessmen to innocent civilians. They would strike fear into the hearts of their victims, demanding hefty ransoms for their release. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. The Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs had their eyes set on even greater riches. They began hijacking goods vehicles, stealing valuable cargo, and selling it on the black market. Their illicit operations were not without protection, as they forged alliances with corrupt police officers who turned a blind eye to their activities, and it didn't stop there. These gangs were not just street thugs, they were shrewd businessmen. They established partnerships with influential businessmen who provided them with financial backing and protection in exchange for a share of the profits. This unholy alliance allowed the Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs to expand their operations and tighten their grip on power. Their influence extended far beyond the streets. They strategically positioned themselves in control of the motorbike taxi ranks, monopolizing this industry and reaping the financial rewards. Additionally, they took control of the southern exit of Port-au-Prince, a crucial route on which four departments of the country depend. The Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs had become a force to be reckoned with, instilling fear in the hearts of the people and challenging the authority of the government. Their rise to power was nothing short of astonishing, as they transformed from former vigilantes to feared criminals, amassing wealth and influence along the way. Carrefour's Mariani neighborhood became a battleground as the Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs contested control of the capital's southern entrance. The streets ran red with blood as these rival factions clashed, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Meanwhile, in the heart of Port-au-Prince, the Martisson and Carrefour Feuille neighborhoods became hotbeds of gang activity. The Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs fought tooth and nail to establish dominance, leaving residents in a constant state of fear and uncertainty. But their reach extended far beyond the capital. In the eastern communes of Petionville and Kenskov, the Kras Barrier gang, an 
ally of the Grand Ravine and Five Seconds gangs expanded its influence. These gangs sought control over key economic assets, such as the Lafito port, industrial areas, and Road 1, which connects the capital to the north of the country. The municipalities north of the capital also fell victim to the insidious expansion of these gangs. The Five Seconds, Titanian, and Canaan gangs sought control over strategic road axes and economic assets, including the Lafito port and industrial areas. Their thirst for power knew no bounds as they aimed to dominate the region and exploit its resources. The Artibonite Department witnessed a staggering 70% rise in gang-related fatalities in 2023 compared to the previous year. Gangs like Grand Grief de Savienne, Cocorat San Ras, and Five Seconds engaged in fierce battles, contesting control of farming lands and strategic road axes. The innocent civilians caught in the crossfire paid the ultimate price. Violence also seeped into other regions, albeit at lower levels. The Centre, Grand Ars, and Nord departments experienced increasing clashes involving law enforcement forces and self-defense groups seeking to contain gang activities. The situation was a powder keg ready to explode as the people fought to protect their communities from the encroaching darkness. Amidst this chaos, civilians became the primary targets of gang turf wars and territorial expansions. Shockingly, violence targeting civilians represented a staggering 53% of all recorded gang-related violence in the country. The gangs used violence as a means to subjugate populations residing in territories under their control or under dispute. Anyone suspected of cooperating with rival gangs or bypassing the ruling gang's authority became a target for their wrath. Abductions for ransom became another weapon in the arsenal of these gangs. Although the levels decreased compared to 2022, the fear of being snatched away from their loved ones haunted the minds of the people as they lived in constant fear of becoming victims of these heinous crimes. The stakes were raised even higher as attacks on political figures surged in 2023. Government representatives, judges, politicians, and activists found themselves in the crosshairs of these ruthless gangs. The message was clear. No one was safe from their reach. The gang's increasing willingness to directly target officials for extortion or to silence those who dared to denounce their activities sent shockwaves through the nation. Against the backdrop of deadlier violence targeting civilians and a general perception of the government's inability to combat the gangs, a surge in vigilante violence added another layer to Haiti's security landscape. Reported fatalities from vigilante events accounted for 15% of political violence in 2023. The people, frustrated and desperate for justice, took matters into their own hands, seeking retribution against the gangs that had terrorized their communities. The multiplication of such events across the country only fueled the sickly of violence as the gangs retaliated with even greater force. Haiti had become a battleground, with innocent lives caught in the crossfire. That brings us to the end of this video. For more interesting videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.